Welcome to Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. The island nation of Iceland lies between Canada and Norway, a little bit south of Greenland, a little bit north of the UK. The port of Reykjavik is small and rather remote from the city. You'll need to get transportation into the city unless you're ready to walk 30 to 40 minutes to get there. The hop on hop off bus might be a great option, except you do want to be aware of times. It usually stops running fairly early in the evening. And if you're looking to do anything at night, that could be problematic. The city center itself is fairly walkable, although there are hills, but it's well connected and not hard to get around. Throughout the city, you will find museums, shopping, excursions, and attractions. For views over the entire city, you can go to the top of the Perlon and to the top of the Hallgrimskirke. Both of those have great views, but you will pay to get to the top of each. The church really is centrally located and you can walk to it once you're in the city from almost anywhere. Make sure and get yourself all the way around the whole church because the views are really different from every angle and go inside because the architecture is just as interesting from the interior as it is from outside. Depending on how much time you spend at restaurants or at attractions will determine how much time you need in Reykjavik. If you're just walking around and want to see the sights, you can easily do it in a morning or an afternoon, which gives you plenty of time to get out and see some of the stuff outside of the city that Reykjavik is probably even better known for. So in Reykjavik, you're almost for sure going to hit the Golden Circle. You should plan at least five hours to complete the Golden Circle. How much you do and how long you stay in each place will determine how much time you'll actually need. You will definitely want to get to Pingviller, Geysir, Golfoss, and the Karad Crater. If you have additional time, you may want to go snorkeling in the Silfa Crater, which is in the Pingviller National Park, or you may want to go to either the Secret Lagoon or the Blue Lagoon. We are in a national park. It's the Pingviller. National Park, a few midges around here, uh, and we have hit these amazing vistas. The beautiful part about coming someplace like this is you, one, we got this terrific weather. We've got so much blue sky today, but we've also managed to get our own driver, and so we're able to stop on roads when we see great views, and there's just nothing better than being able to talk to a local get midges out of my face, talk to a local and and get get answers to questions and hear stories and then just be able to stop wherever we want to for great pictures or great views or just little pit stops. That letter that looks like a P actually makes a TH sound in Icelandic. And so the name of the park is Thingveller, and it literally means assembly plans. So it has this huge Viking history dating back to the year 930, and the Vikings continued to convene there until 1798. So it is a national park with historic significance, but it is also a geologic wonder. Silfra is a rift between the Eurasian and the North American tectonic plates, and you can go snorkeling or diving there in some of the cleanest water on Earth. That water comes from glaciers for 30 to 100 years after flowing through porous lava rock, so it's really a unique diving experience. which is one of the stops on the Golden Circle. Golfoss is Golden Falls because depending on the season and the lighting, you see gold in the water. It is amazingly powerful, beautiful. The ravine is just terrific. You can go to a viewpoint up at the top of the falls and then you can walk down some stairs and get to a lower area that will then bring you down to a walkway that takes you right up close to the falls. So this, this is why you bike out to the bottom of the falls 
and get to where you can see it close enough. In the Helkadalur Valley lies an active geothermal area. It's about one square mile, involves streams that all flow the same direction as the tectonic plates and has boiling pits and, um, uh, and some geysers. The Great Geyser is no longer active, but Stroker is active very often and is a lot uh, of fun. Trisha, the name of this hot spring is Stroker. Very easy to say, Stroker. Stroker. Geyser was active for many years ago. Okay. But we holding hold the name Geyser. We say we are going to Geyser. But we're going to see a Stroker. which is in the golden circle and we wait for this uh, geyser to shoot up and it's sort of timed at about every four to six minutes we just had a crazy little eruption where it went up we got pictures we were so proud of ourselves and within about 45 seconds it went up again much much taller much bigger eruption and sprayed everybody around here so we're a little bit wet but having fun and pretty excited about getting to see a real geyser in Iceland. Yeah, but you see, Stroker active five, seven minutes between eruption. I thought it felt more like about 10 seconds. <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yeah. But I not recommend the people take a shower in the, in the hot spring, Stroker. <laughs> The Carid Crater lies in the Grimsness area where there's an awful lot of lava and volcanic remnants. It's believed that the crater was formed by the collapse of a small magma chamber underneath the crater. It then has filled with water and it is now a window into the groundwater table as it rises and falls with the level of the groundwater. There's a viewing area from above and you can take a trail and walk down to the water itself. So we may have left out some of your favorite things to do in Reykjavik. Go ahead and comment below and add to our list of favorites. And don't miss our video on Akureyri up in the north. We also have videos on Jupifoger, Isafjordr, and Grundafjordr.